Hi, heard me introduce myself before. I'm Mitch Resnick. If you haven't met me before, and it's great to have all of you here. How's Scratch Day going so far? Yeah. Good. Glad you like it. Uh, so, uh, thanks for coming to this session because this is a session that's important to us, and it's great to have you here because this session I want to make less of a lecture. Some of the sessions in this room have been about us just <coughs> telling things to people who are coming. We really want this one to be a real discussion to hear from you. But we want to talk about some of the future directions for Scratch. And as we work on how to think about Scratch in the future, we, you know, we're really influenced by what people are using Scratch today are thinking. Uh, so we always look on all the websites. People give lots of suggestions. And we're always interested in hearing the suggestions that people in the Scratch community you know, are giving. You know, I think that you know, we really want to, you know, you're the ones who have lots of experience with Scratch. And we're really interested to know what you have, the direction you think Scratch should be in the future. You know, the first version of Scratch came out three years ago. If you were now the third anniversary. So that was Scratch 1.0. And we've gone from Scratch 1.0 to 1.1 to 1.2. And as you know, we have 1.4 now. Yeah, yep. I started with 1.3, and I didn't even know 1.4 came out until like half yeah. half so I'm, year I'm sure people have tried. There probably some people started with 1.0, 1.1, 1.3, 1.4. But in fact, right now, we want to make sort of a big jump into the future. So we're starting to talk about Scratch 2.0. And it's going to take, a, it's going to take us a while to work on that. We're still in the early stages. So that's a great time to hear from you. Because we want to think about what's going to be, how can we make a next generation uh, that will really add all sorts of new things. We want to keep the same basic ideas. We want to make it easy for you to create things, create your own interactive stories and games and animations. That's not going to change. We want to make it easy to share and collaborate with others. That's not going to change. We just want to make it even better to do all those things so you can create even more things than before and share even more easily than before. Yep? Like advertisements or... It's not spam. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there'll be lots of ideas. So we're thinking about all sorts of ideas. What I was going to suggest doing was when we want to hear all those ideas, but thanks for sharing them. A few... A month or so ago, we put together a short video. Before that, I should say, it's also great. There are a few other members of the Scratch team who are here that can also help in the discussion. So it's great they're here because they'll get to hear your ideas. But also, it's great that you know, they can also share in some of the, their thoughts. So there's John Maloney, who's like headed up the software development effort for Scratch. And there's Amos, also known as Lightning, on the website. So, you know, a lot of you, if you've asked questions on the Scratch website, you've probably heard back from Amos. He answers a lot of the questions on the website. And there's Paul there, who's also been working on the Scratch team uh, in a variety of different ways. So uh, we want to, you know, all of us are interested in hearing from you. So the way I was thinking of doing this is we put together a three-minute video. So it's just a short video. It gives a little background about Scratch and says a little bit about some of the possible ways that we might go forward with Scratch 2.0. But again, we're still considering all these different things. So this will start to give you at least some ideas of some of the ways we're thinking about it. So I'm going to show that video, and then we're going to open up to hear your ideas and to talk about and have conversation about some of the possible ideas. So here's this video that we made just last month that a few of us on the Scratch team put together. It was based on the ideas that a bunch of us on the Scratch team have been thinking about for a while. Let me plug this in. And I apologize, I, I was told in the last session that when I plug this in, we get a high-pitched sound. There's Andres, another member of the Scratch team. So, yeah, so there's, there's, yeah, so there's a bunch of Scratch. So here, well, there's, there's just three minutes, and then we'll go into discussion. People these days have access to an incredible variety of interactive stories and games and animations and other dynamic interactive media on their computers. But there's a problem. In most cases, it's a one-way street. All they get to do is point and click and browse. They don't get to design and create their own stories and games. We wanted to change that, so we've created a new type of programming language called Scratch that allows everyone of all ages to be able to design and create their own dynamic interactive media and share their creations with others around the world. I like Scratch because it's so easy. You can do great things, uh, complicated projects, 
with Crash, kids can create their own interactive games. They can make animated stories. Some kids are creating their own news broadcasts, art, music, and even their own software tools. I made these uh, rocket projects. You can fly around to these different planets and you can answer a different quiz question on two of them and uh, you can play a game on one of them and you can go back to Earth also. After they've created their projects, they then share them online with each other and then they can download each other's projects and remix them. I'm most proud of a project called Road on the World. It was this talk show where I interviewed the little scratch cat and I said, hey, if you want to be on World of the World, message me. I, I made that like a year ago. I get about three comments a day asking if they can be on World of the World. Since the launch of Scratch in 2007, people have set almost a million projects. Scratch careers have been created by people of all ages, but it's particularly popular among kids. So here's where Andre is talking about some of the ideas for Scratch 2.0. I made that point out, right? and create this and do some things that I really love, but also learn from it. So Scratch 2.0, we're planning to expand the opportunities for young people to create, share, and collaborate on interactive media. Together with the community, we have identified four areas where we want to take Scratch in the future. The first one is to be able to share projects on mobile devices. The second area is to be able to connect Scratch projects to social media environments. The next one is to be able to create and remix seamlessly Scratch projects within the web browser without having to download or upload anything. Finally, the fourth area is to be able to create an environment and provide a platform for people to come together in collaborative teams from people from around the world and build projects together. As we develop Scratch 2.0, we will work closely with the Scratch community members, providing them ongoing opportunities to propose features, test prototypes, and share resources with us and each other. So, as you, said, you know, as we as you talked about there, we really want to do it in a way where we get ideas from the community. So as you saw just there, some of our ideas is we one of the things that's made us most excited about Scratch is all the creative ways that all of you have been collaborating and sharing with each other. So we think there's a lot more that can be done to make it even easier and better to share things and collaborate. Uh, so you can see make it easier to see what's going on in other people's projects, to build on top of other people's projects, uh, to be able to do it on uh, connect up with you know things that others are doing. That's some of the things that we're thinking about, but that's just part of it. You know, I think there's all sorts of different things that, that we could be doing with Scratch 2.0, and we're really interested in hearing from you some of the things that you think would be most interesting. So maybe we can just open it up now. We'd love to just hear people give some of their ideas of, of what you think would be good for us to be thinking about as we work on Scratch 2.0. Take hey, some so second. I'm in middle school and I have kids using Scratch and it's perfect. But I would like to be able to do it, have them, for example, make a project for English that they could easily submit or share with the English teacher without having to have a login on the Scratch website. So if they could either upload it to a wiki or a Moodle or one of your, I can't tell if one of your solutions will solve that, I wasn't really sure. So I want them to be able to if they could have explored it to quick time, it would be great. Right. I think that's gonna There's probably a few things there. Well, yeah. no, and some of the yeah. things we talk about is, you know, that what if you had the Scratch project? Maybe you should be able to export it as Flash and then just have it as Flash within that. it. So that's one way you could do it. And so we are. That's one thing we're definitely interested in. Is make it even easier to share. So make it easier to put it out in the form that's easier to put into other uh, things. Yep, right here. <laughs> Yeah, so the question was, can we make subroutines like BYOB? So some of you might know that some friends of ours have made a special version of Scratch called BYOB, where build your own bricks, build your own blocks. 